Welcome to the Business and Bubbly podcast. This is the place for women in business who are on the journey of building their big ideas and want to have fun along the way. It's for those of us who also know we aren't meant to do business or life alone. Hi, I'm Charity Majors, your host and the founder of Business and Bubbly. Think of this kind of like the, can I pick your brain chats that you always wanted to have with those who are doing epic things, plus business besties, hype girls, and getting into massive action towards your next big idea, all the same place. Oh, and bubbles, because if you're not having fun along the way, you're not doing it right. Together, we'll unlock what it means to be seen, known, heard, and championed all along the ups and downs of entrepreneurship and being a woman in business building big dreams. Each week, I'll bring you a quick sip business tip as well as interviews from top experts that make you feel like you're getting bottle service for your business. We're having the raw and real conversations and chatting about all the things, the messy middle, the pivots, scaling, the good days and the bad days, because here we do real. It's where we can work hard, play hard, cry it out and dance it out all at the same time without being judged. This is the place where we are in the arena together and we are each other's biggest fans because most of us have enough comments from the cheap seats. It's where our too much is par for the course and where the gaps of our not enough are filled in by the other epic women that are around us. It's where we can be unapologetic about the mission we are on, about the big dreams on our heart and the business we are building without having to be perfect or have it all together or even pretend to. It's a supportive community where business is being done amongst like-minded women because when money gets in the hands of good women, great things happen. It's a place where you have the support around you to get out of your comfort zone and go after your big ideas because even when you fail forward or when you reach the top, you know it won't be alone. Also, if you know anything about me, you'll know that I'm obsessed with creating platforms that lift up other women to be seen and heard and known. So with that in mind, I'd like to invite you to list your business on our directory called Find Women in Business. All you've got to do is text the word directory to 833-231-8098 and I'll text you the link back to get your free listing. This is also a great way to connect with other women in business from around the world, so definitely check it out. And now let's get to the good stuff. Grab a glass of your favorite beverage, Prosecco, bubbly water, or whatever your flavor is and let's dive in. Are you with me? Here we go. Hey, sis. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Charity Majors, and we are doing a quick sip episode where we we are going to be talking about the characteristic that every leader needs. If this is your first time joining us, hello. It's so great to connect with you. I am Charity Majors. I'm the founder of Business and Bubbly. And I, like you, am in this beautiful, messy journey of being in business and life and entrepreneurship and mom life and all the things in between. And I also know that I'm called to be a voice. And I also know that the things that I build that I'm actually called to really get big and create spaces for other women like you to be able to step up onto. And this is a part of that. And so is leadership. And so we are diving into a characteristic that every leader needs. Okay. Okay. Give me some guesses. Give me some guesses. I would love to actually hear your guesses on Instagram. Come hang out with me at Charity Majors or Business and Bubbly. Either one. They're both me. Yes, I do my own social media because I love to stay connected with you, my people. And this characteristic is courage. Okay. So courage is right like it's not necessarily this thing where uh, like we don't ever feel fear and we have just become so amazing that we just don't ever feel fear or feel the butterflies or feel stuck or feel those limiting beliefs come up but it actually means that we acknowledge that those things are there and we're going to choose differently than what that fear is suggesting to us 
Okay. Other people, they like to say, I've heard this being said before and I love it, but it's courage is fear that has said its prayers. Um, right. So courage is the characteristic that every leader needs. Now for you, maybe you are in business and maybe you are leading a few people. Maybe you're not necessarily leading people. Maybe you're just starting out and you're like, Oh, like how do I grow into my leadership? Or maybe you are, maybe you have a great following. Maybe you're pouring into others as a leader. Side note, sidebar is leadership is very different than influence when it comes to like being an influencer and what we have in today's world. I actually think that there are way too many people that are trying to do things on their own and they're trying to be the guru and the leader and the expert at the top and just have all these little peon followers. And that's not what we're about. We actually have flipped that model on its head and we, the leaders that we have here and the culture that we have is actually servant leadership to where we are the foundation of what people can step up onto. We are the foundation of what women are able to really step up, stand out, get visible, get big, because it's about you. It's about our community. It's about growing together, right? We actually reject the idea that it's lonely at the top. It's like, no, it's not. It's only lonely at the top if you've bulldozed over people and not brought them with you and not lifted them up with you. Like we reject that idea here at Business and Bubbly. Like it is not lonely at the top. Like it is a party at the top with your with your BFFs, with your business besties, with those who you have poured into and loved and brought along with you in the journey and who have wanted to go with you in the journey. So it is a party at the top. There is community at the top, right? But to get there, you need courage. And I'm going to share why, okay? So every leader is going to need courage in these few different areas. So you're going to need courage in your decision making, okay? This is going to... Right, and the decisions that you make, whether it's in your life, whether it's in your business, um, the decision making of where things are going to be at or where you live or where you're going to launch the thing or where you're going to like even host your website, right? Um, this is going to, you're going to need courage in your decision making as far as when, when to say yes, when to say no, when to plan for something, when to shut it down, when to chuck it out the window, when to start the thing, launch the thing. Um, you're going to need courage in your decision making with who, who are you surrounding yourself with? What rooms are you intentionally putting yourself in? Who is coming along with you in the journey? Um, who are you building a business with? What team members are you bringing along? Is it just you? Are you the bottleneck? Are you the problem? Hi, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me, right? Decision making is also you need to be courageous in who and who you're surrounding yourself with. And I love this one because I know for me, as a people lover, this is like one of the challenging areas that I really had to grow through in my journey of who. And this comes into not only who I surround myself with, but also who doesn't get to go with me into the next season. And I can honestly tell you, as I have people like recovering people pleasing tendencies, this one's hard. And this one is right every time I know that there's a new level of growth. Sometimes some people are going to misunderstand me or maybe you too, right? They're going to maybe misunderstand you and what you're trying to build or create or launch. And it's only because they're just comfortable with who you used to be or who they have known you to be in a former season. And I love to say that I love this saying, but who is for you with the dreams that you have, they're going to be with you in the next season and who is against you. They're just going to get to stay with you or stay in the past and in your, your former season that you're moving out of. Okay. And this also means that sometimes who you surround yourself with, that it might challenge you in a really good way. What are the rooms that you need to be in? Because you know, you need to be in close proximity, right? Because there's power in proximity. There's power in connection. There's, I can honestly tell you that every time I know that I'm being called to level up, I actually have to find who I need to be around and who needs to be like lovingly left where they are at instead of me trying to drag them into the next season or into the next level of my growth. So who you're going to need to make courageous decisions and who you surround yourself with in a good way, as well as who gets to stay. And then also courage and decision-making in how much, right? Like how much money, how much time, how much you say yes to, how much you say no to. And oh man, 
this is another thing, right? Like how much can you, how much are you saying no to, to where you, so that you can say yes to the other, to the, like the, the great thing, right? Cause the, the enemy of, of great is good, right? You could sure you could do a lot of good things, but you probably won't ever get to the great thing unless you start to say no to the good thing and or start to say no to the good thing and really like give a big hell yes to the great thing, right? So how are you, how can you be courageous in how much time, how much of your yes, how much of your no, how much of your energy, how much like, oh, boundaries, hello, boundaries, how much money, maybe money you're spending on different systems or different processes or different apps or how much email, how many emails you're subscribed to or how much you're going to spend to invest in a mastermind or being a mentor, or maybe you want to become a chapter director and you're like, Oh, like how much time or how much money do I have to invest? Or like, how much am I going to pour into these certain people? How much are they taking from me? How much am I willing to give? Right? How much time, how much money, how much energy? Another area of courage that you will have to have as a leader is you have to be courageous in conflict and in discipline. Oh, this is hard because sometimes nobody likes to play the, the bad cop when it comes to discipline. But here's the thing. Discipline, it actually just means to disciple or to grow up, to teach, to train, to pour into. A lot of people think that discipline is like spanking and being stern and mean and whatever. Like, but when I actually discipline my kids, I don't, I don't spank my kids. I actually like discipline them, like disciple them. I teach them. I train them in the way of love, right? Like in the way of according to our family and our family values. And so discipline looks like love and discipline looks like getting on the floor with my six-year-old son when he's throwing a fit because his Legos fell over. Discipline looks like I get to get on the floor with him and I get to hold him and love him and like empathize with him and show compassion and help him rebuild the thing and help him say, actually, see how this, like there was a lot of Legos at the top. Well, it made it topple over. So let's build the foundation stronger so that it doesn't topple over, right? Like I get to teach him now, right? So discipline is different than what culture might say it is. And then we need to also be courageous in our, the way that we deal with conflict. Okay. And conflict is this thing that if we deal with people and hello, you're a human and you probably deal with people which is a great thing. And people are messy. People are in their own individual journeys on this collective planet. And there's going to be conflict. And I'll be the first to admit that, ooh, I used to not be able to do conflict. Like, oh, like I used to either hate it and avoid it, or I would pick the wrong fights or the wrong timing. And I'm not by no means perfect. Like my husband can tell you like that we are still learning to fight really well. And, you know, we've had to do a lot of work around this, but when it comes to conflict and dealing with people, we actually want to learn how to do conflict in a healthy way, because when we can do conflict in a healthy way, what it actually leads to is trust and it leads to connection. Like I can tell you, like when my husband and I, when we do conflict well, right, we actually are able to express our feelings. We're actually able to hold compassion and empathy for each other. It might mean that we just, we agree to disagree. He's going to like, he's a grown man and he can have his own opinions and I'm a grown woman and I can have my own opinions. But when we can still come together in connection, regardless of the differences of views, right? We heard a lot about this, you know, on social media, like recently with all the different you're the left and the right and the diversity and the color, you're this color and I'm that color and I believe this and you believe that and vaccine or no vaccine or any of that stuff, right? But if we can learn to do conflict well in a healthy way that leads to connection, it actually leads to trust. If we do conflict poorly, then it actually leads to disconnection. It leads to tearing apart of relationships. And so FYI, we want to do conflict well. It doesn't mean we're going to convince someone to like take on our beliefs or to whatever it might be, but it means that we respect them, that we honor them, that we love them right where they're at. Even if their opinion is different, we can hold space. We can hold compassion. We can have brave communication. We can have boundaries. 
right? If we can do conflict well, that leads to connection. It leads to trust. If we do conflict poorly, it's going to lead to dis- distrust. So you sometimes that looks like being courageous. And oh, like if we've like got some bad, poor patterns when it comes to conflict, sometimes we have to be courageous in our decisions in dealing with conflict and how we deal with them. The next place you're going to need courage is with people. Yay, people, right? We love people. I'm such a people person. If you know me, you know that I love people. I love their quirkiness and the different personalities and getting to know people and their story. Like I, I, I literally, like I maybe have met you, maybe not, but know that I love you. Like I genuinely love you. Like I love all people. And I'm going to share... I didn't even plan on sharing this, but I feel like I'm supposed to anyways. A big reason that I love people, I've actually, I've always loved people, but actually through the dark night of the soul, one of the most valuable lessons that I gained was how amazing you are, how amazing people are. And this was about six years ago. My husband and I, we actually journeyed through the loss of a child and we're, we're diving in the deep end a little bit. And this, and I wasn't planning on it, but it's okay, right? We can be courageous. Actually, the next one is in communication. So I'm actually, I'm just going to model this right now. <laughs> I'm getting vulnerable and just being courageous in communication, even though it wasn't in the plan. And as my husband and I journeyed through the loss of a child, it was really hard. And I questioned God and my existence and why I was here. Cause it's not just, if you've ever journeyed through loss, um, you know, that it's not just the loss of a baby, but it's the loss of hopes and dreams and the plans that you have for your family. And it just is, it's really, really hard. And what it really did, like I felt really broken. I felt really alone even though my husband was amazing and journeyed with me through it, we just processed through things differently, right? Like he had his own journey and I had my own journey. And I remember sitting on the bathroom floor, ugly crying, like really asking the big questions, like why this baby, why us, why this dream, why our family, why do we have to go through this? Why am I even here? Like, why, like, why do I even want to be here? Why do I even want to continue living? Like my heart was so broken. My body felt so broken because I couldn't keep my baby safe was what I was telling myself. I felt so alone and so isolated, so buried in shame. And what was really interesting was I remember sitting there ugly crying on the bathroom floor and God met me and I'm not trying to push my beliefs on you. So fill in the blank for you. As far as your higher power for me, it's God. God came and met me. And in my, every place that I felt alone, he came and sat with me. Every place that I felt broken, he actually told me that I wasn't broken and I didn't need any fixing. And he didn't give me a seven step to get out of my shame and seven steps to get out of my whatever, like most of the personal development world will. He didn't give me some sort of tool. He gave me himself. And then as I began to journey out of like out of this dark night of the soul and into healing and really finding the power of my story and really being connected in other community of other women who had journeyed through loss, as I found that I wasn't alone, that as I realized that I wasn't broken, that I didn't need another tool that actually in a big piece of the unique perspective and lens that I was given as I journeyed and as I healed out of loss was that there are a million pieces and parts that have to come together for life to be sustained. And it's not a mistake, my friend, that you are here. It's not a mistake that I'm here. It's not a mistake out of all of eternity, out of all of the thousands of years that the earth has been around and all of the different generations that had to come together perfectly for you to be here at this exact moment in all of history. It is not a mistake, my friend. And we can teach what we know. There's a lot of people teaching what they know, but we can impart what we've experienced. And for me, the impartation that I had received out of that dark night of my soul and journeying through loss and coming out with the perspective that you are here on purpose for a purpose and you are not a mistake and you are a walking and breathing miracle and that I love you 
Like that is an impartation, my friend. So know that when I say that I love people, it comes deep within every cell of my body because that is a lesson that I had to journey through and a gift that I was given out of the hardest of times in life. So know that, yes, I love people and I love you. Okay. So we are back on track as far as the brave, the courage that you're going to need. And like I said, you're going to need courage when it comes to dealing with people. And that's because we're messy. That's because we're we're people, we're human. We're not going to always get it right. We're going to have different expectations. We're going to have different beliefs. We're going to have different perspectives, different viewpoints. And at the same time, we are actually a lot alike, right? At the core of who we are, everyone wants to be seen and heard and known and belong. And so what does that look like when it comes to courage when we're dealing with people? Sometimes it looks like being vulnerable. Sometimes it looks like saying like keeping your mouth shut (laughs) and not saying what you really want to say sometimes it looks like drawing out the potential in others sometimes courage dealing with people looks like boundaries okay another thing that we have to be courage in is when it comes to culture like what's the culture that you are creating in your thing or in your business or in your community or in your brand or in your friendships or in your family what's the culture and how do you really protect that and stand in that And how do you create it? So you're going to have to be brave when it comes to creating your culture. And it might be counterculture to maybe what your family is, uh, you know, was raised in. It might be counterculture. You know, there was actually, I'll share this example. I posted this the other day on Instagram and it was a meme from somebody else that they posted, but I reshared it. And it said, that this lady brought her five-year-old daughter onto the airplane and met the pilot. The pilot was like, oh, you could be a stewardess one day. And this five-year-old little girl looks at the pilot and was like, well, yeah, but I could also own the plane one day. Boom. I was like, yes, girl. <laughs> right? Like, what does it look like to be countercultural when we were raising our babies or when we're doing something different than our parents did or when the, we're setting the culture of our family or of our business or of those that we're surrounding ourselves with or with our friendships and the, ex, and the, the boundaries that we have when it comes to the people around us or, yeah, so culture and courage, they need to go together, right? Um, courage in your communication Right. So you actually just heard a real life example of what that looks like. Sometimes we have to be vulnerable and really open up and let others in. Sometimes it means that we're saying no. For me, again, as a as that former recovering, you know, people with people pleasing tendencies, boundaries and communication and really communicating that actually I'm gonna say no here. And you might, oh, you might not like it. And that's okay. Like I love you, but I have to say no. Right. Like it looks sometimes courage in our communication looks like saying no. Sometimes courage in our communication looks like standing up for ourselves. Sometimes courage in communication looks like standing up for other people. Sometimes courage in communication looks like shutting our mouth. Sometimes courage in communication, um, it looks like boundaries. Right. So we're going to need courage in communication and dealing with conflict and saying sometimes what, ooh, what we might be afraid to say. Sometimes that looks like you owning your voice and the message that's on your heart and actually sharing it and getting big and vocal and loud about it. The next character or the next place that we're going to need courage in is also our plans. Right. Oh, with our plans. It, it's real easy to stay safe. It's real easy to stay comfortable. It's, it's real easy to just like coast, but it's also as, oh, but I'm going to be brave in my communication and actually kind of kick you in the butt a little bit and say, that's not what you're meant to do. Because if you're listening to this, you're meant for more and you're meant to do big things. And so what does that look like to make courageous plans? Right to plan for the big launch, to put it in your calendar, to finish the book, to put it on, you know, like to invest in the program or to join the community. What does it look like in your plans? What does it look like to say no to your plans and actually create space? Maybe you're feeling too busy and overwhelmed and you actually need to put in your plans free time and play and vacation and go like, go have fun, go get your nails done. What does it look like to have courage in your plans to say no 
and to really put boundaries around your plans. Okay. There's obviously more when it comes to having courage in different facets of your life, but these are a few that I wanted to touch on today. And so every, the characteristic that every leader needs that as you grow in your leadership journey and you are a leader, right? Whether it's your babies are following you, whether you have, you know, a couple of your girlfriends that you are pouring into, maybe you are, you have your customers, maybe you have, you are an influencer on social media, maybe you are building community. You are a leader. And my encouragement for you is where in these areas do you need to grow in your courage? Where can you take that scary step? Where can your fears say a little prayer, put on your, pull up your big girl panties and take a step out in the place that seems really scary? Okay, so you're going to need courage. Every leader does. If this resonated with you, I would actually love to connect with you on Instagram. Come hang out. Come put your big girl panties on. Send me a little message. Yes, it's me on Instagram. I love to stay connected with my people, with you guys, um, and really have those conversations in the DMs. So make sure that you say hi and tell me where you are growing in your courage as a leader. What area of your life? How are you taking that big step of faith? How are you putting your big girl panties on? Like giving fear a high five and moving forward anyways. I want to hear. So come hang out with me on Instagram at charity majors or and or business and bubbly. I would love to hear. And as always, you know, I'm in your corner, borrow my belief if you need to, but I believe in you, my friend, you have what it takes. <laughs> like I said, give your fear a little high five and move forward. Anyways, do it anyways, do the thing, do it afraid. You, uh, you ready is a lie. You don't need to be ready. It doesn't need to be perfect, but you've got it. You've got it. I'll go after it. All right. Cheers to your success, my friend. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to the show. I hope it brought some value and some fun into your business and life. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast and even share the episode with a fellow business bestie who you know will love it. It helps us continue to attract top level guests and reach more and more women who are on their journey in business, just like you. Remember that when money gets in the hands of good women, great things happen. Cheers to your success.